Guys, how are you doing? My name is Timur again. I'm one of the persons at 500 Startups. If you don't know about 500 Startups, in the last 10 years, we've invested in 10 unicorns. Uh, so currently, I'm going to talk about fundraising a little bit more. I think a lot of people do talk about fundraising. And I think the hardest part that we don't talk about is how do we find investors in particular? So that's going to be the topic of today. Um, you know, you fair warning is that you do need to know that fundraising is a really time consuming task. So it is going to take a lot of your time. And so without further ado, uh, let's get started. So before you get started, there are a few things you need to know, right? That it, it takes, um, you know, you know, it takes a dozen or more, you know, it takes, uh, you need to talk to a lot of founders, right? You need to talk to a lot of founders to make sure this is really what you want to do, right? And they will give you tips and advice if it's the right thing to do. And they will also make intros for VCs or angels that they've raised from you and that they have raised in the past, right? So this is really important before you go out and do fundraising. Talk to a lot of founders, talk to your friends who have already raised funds. And even if you don't have friends, you can always reach out to founders that on the company that you really admire. You'll be surprised how many people are willing to help you, give you advice and make introductions for you. So the biggest advice I got, one of the biggest tips that I've heard over from my peers that was that, you know, spending a large amount of time that when you're in the early stage, um, you know, spending a lot of time with venture capitalist is not the right way to go um, because the competition's so tough, right? So instead, you should really try to go and find angels, right? Angels are pretty much people who have a lot of amount of checkbooks and are willing to write you money for like ten thousand dollars to twenty five thousand dollars, right? There are ton of angel syndicates out there. Um, so you should be reaching out to people who have wealth. There are a lot of people out there. Um, you know, with that said, that doesn't mean you shouldn't take meetings with venture capitalists, right? That will actually help you make more connections, but it will also make sure that you they are asking you right and tough questions, right? So that will make you think more about your business. How do we uh, come over objections of venture capitalists? Um, and how do we make, how do we think about product differently? How do we think about our market differently? So that's where do we sees do come in. So uh, when I started, uh, you know, I, uh, before I was an EIR at 500, I was also a founder. So I got invested with 500 startups. And I, when I was fundraising, I used my 500 startups network. So 500 startups have invested in thousands of startups and thousands of founders around the globe. And I used that network to my advantage. I reached out to 500 founders and asked them like, you know, what do we need to do? So it's important to do your research, right? Before you even reach out, do your research like, okay, what product uh, are the founders, uh, you know, the founders have created? What VCs they have they raised from? Um, what, uh, you know, venture capitalists they have raised from? What is their investment thesis? And find the ones that you think fit the best and ask, and ask for advice. Right. Reach out to the founders, ask for advice like, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. This is what I'm trying to build. Right. Um, and it's important to when you do ask for a favor. Right. Which is in shows, just ask two or three intros. No more. Right. Um, and when you do ask for these things, have a blurb ready. Right. Which is a blurb, which is like pretty much tells you a short description, which is for that the founder can forward to the investor or the VC very easily and they can uh, send it, send it to them without like ch with changing very few things and add your deck. Right? So if you're adding a deck, there's a tool that I use is called Docsend. What Docsend allows you to do is actually track who's this being sent to, because you don't want your tools. Uh, you don't want your deck to be outside too much and we'll show you what, what slides each angel or each VC is looking for, right? This is one of the most important analytical tool that I used. Here's a quick example of the blurb we use, right? So here's a quick example that I use for a company to forward, right? So I quickly talk about what the company does, 
right? So I talk about uh, what FIPE is, right? It's a quick description of what it is. High levels, well, it is profitable. How much it's growing, right? It's important to know your metrics. How much are you growing month over month? How many employees do you have? Uh, how much are you making per month? And what are your asks, right? And at the end, you have attached uh, your slide. But keep in mind, like he is using Google Doc, I would say use Docs. It's free to use. It's easy. It's much better. And uh, that's it. Once that's done, you know, be sure you follow up, right? So when I say follow up, follow up once a week to see, well, did you send, did you send the intro, right? It's always good to be CC'd on the meeting, uh, email. If not, just ask up and see what the founder did say. Going back to the thing, uh, Sorry, guys. Uh, so it's really important to size up in investors, right? So you need to understand what is the motivation behind each investor, right? This is important because investors are motivated by different things, right? Some want to make money. Some don't want to lose money, right? Some are just doing it because they love you as a founder and they see themselves in, in you as a founder, right? Some want to just brag like, hey, I'm starting investing in founders. Right. Some will just invest in like AI companies like Neville Rakant does. He will just put money in founders so we can learn about more about the industries, learn more about the nuances. Right. Um, so it's important to do this. Right. So some you need to you need to, you need to remember, like, you know, uh, like. People don't mind losing money if there if there is like, you know, ton to be made. Right. So, for example, if you're if they're investing like 10K and it has a 95% chance of profitability, uh, sorry, 95% chance that they will lose it all, and a 5% chance that they will make 1 million, right? That's most startups, right? So there are a lot of non-IOI reasons, ROI reasons, that people invest. So you need to learn about the industry, about the technology, right? So wh why they want to invest in a certain startup. And for most people, it's a blend of reasons, but it's important to figure out why the investor wants to invest okay why your startup what they want to do because that way you can control uh how you're going to pitch okay another thing to keep in mind is the storytelling is the most incre uh, incredible and important part of fundraising right i would recommend testing out your deck in front of angels and vcs you don't mind messing up with right so find find people who you can test your deck with and after each meeting see what are the common concerns and questions and try to answer them in the next iteration of the deck that means once you present the deck design the next deck before you go to the next and try to answer the questions that you have right and keep a backlog that means keep all the different decks that you've designed okay um another thing one of the best advices that i've got is that momentum builds momentum right it's like it's like a snowball effect right so if you're throwing a snowball down the hill, it will get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's the most important thing when it comes to angel investing, right? So the more people you close, the more uh, more people you know you will get uh, introduced to. Um, so momentum builds momentum. And if you are meeting a lot of investors, it is it is really important to stack your meetings, right? Um, that means every week you should have like. You know, every week or not every week, every day you should have four to five investor meetings, right? Every day in the week, right? That's the best way to create FOMO. So you don't let investors waste your time, right? So imagine like you are like on a 30 hour crunch. It's like, I, I'm so sorry, I have to leave. I need to go to uh, attend another investor meeting, right? So that's really important to stack all your meetings, right? Before it used to be done is like, for example, if you're raising money in SF, you will stack your meetings and you're raising money in New York. It will make sense. Now, a lot of things are done online. I know it's like a pre uh, you know, this was pre COVID. So, you know, even online, try to stack your meetings back to back and back to back. It will build momentum and it won't allow VCs to waste your time and it will create FOMO for them, which is fear of missing out. So uh, another quick question is like, you know, how many meetings do you really need to get to a yes, right? So how many meetings do you need to get to a yes? So this is a really important question. You need to do at least a hundred meetings to get to one yes, to get to a one yes, right? This is really important. So a lot of founders will give up 
But keep in mind, like you need to have at least 100 meetings to get to yes, right? Even Adam Draper, right? The, the founder of Boost VC, who, whose dad is really big in the industry, had to do 300 meetings to close his round, right? And this is Tim Draper's son, who, whose name is like the biggest in, in the valley when it comes to investing, right? So even he had to do 300 meetings to close his round, right? So remember, it takes a lot of time, energy, and effort to fundraise and find investors. Okay, so the most important thing is to build your spreadsheet, right? So now once you have all these things in place, you have your deck, you have all these things in place, right? You have your doc sign signed up, build your spreadsheet of investors you wanna you wanna reach out to, right? Break them down, break them down by region, their their expertise, what do they help you with? Some will be they're good in SaaS. Some are good at hiring, some are getting, some are leads. What sectors do they invest in? Are they AI? Are they biotech, right? What is their average check size? Like, is it $1 million? Is it 25K, right? Are they the lead, um, the preference stage, right? So is it, it's really important to know, like, are they early stage? Are they seed stage? Or are they a series A or later, right? So you need to keep these things in mind and have a spreadsheet. So you need to write all these things down. Um, and also another thing you need to know is like, well, when you do talk to investors, right? Do they even have funds to invest, right? And even if they do, like, for example, they they, they might have like, okay, I have a million dollars, right? But I will deploy deploy this in 10 companies in this year. Uh, but they that means you're talking to them and you, you don't even know if they've already spent all their money um, in the 10 companies for that year. So that quota is, quota is done, right? So that's really important. And the number of investments they have done in the past uh, Y months, right? Um, and where are they broadcasting their updates, right? Where are they talking about their, uh, the, their company? Where are they talking about their founders? Where are they talking about like articles and all that kind of stuff? Uh, qualify investors on the first meeting. This is really important, right? For individual, uh, at smaller check size, this is often meant like one or two meetings, right? So, so if someone was talking, taking too long to decide to a number to come to decision, right? And the, and the, and the, and then and also depends on how big is the check size, right? Then that investor is not a good fit for you, right? Raising from people who are pretty, who are, who, who are already brought into you, uh, you know what you're doing not from people who 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 you feel like it's going to be uphill battle to convince right if you feel like you're fighting tooth and nail to find and battle someone it's it's better to just let it go and find new people this is the most important thing right uh the important thing is that we just need to figure that out quickly and move on and generate more leads to meet more new people right so the top fundraising mistakes most first time fundraisers make is they spend too much time with people who will just not close quickly enough, right? It's it's tempting to spend a lot of time with investors who will take a meeting with you. And oftentimes this is really hard because you need to go generate new leads and this is harder, right? The better approach is to keep trying to look for new warmer leads rather than warming up the cold ones, okay? So another good strategy is that you do is like start with the minimum check size, right? So we, we we did this as a strategy. Like, for example, if you want to go race from Elon Musk, right? Uh, Elon Musk is a big name, right? But you can say Elon doesn't want to invest in like a big check. You could say like, hey, like Elon, can you just write me a $5,000 check, right? Uh, so start from a good check size, right? And, you know, get people who have a good brand name to close other people, right? So get people brand name to leverage other people, right? And smart, uh, and you can always start small, right? So you can, your, your check sizes could be 25K and you can move all the way up to 200K, right? So what this does is actually help you generate uh, quick commits and create more FOMO, right? So if you're missing out, again, it's the same thing, right? So this is what we're looking at, right? So how do angels, VCs, and uh, corporations differ, right? So for angels, it's all type of reasons that they are, right? So VCs, like, of course, they want to make their money. And if you're, like, raising money for, like, like banks, right, it's more strategic, right? They want to see, well, if this product is going to come and play with my company, how are they going to integrate with my company, right? How am I going to use to diversify my product offering, right? So angels, with angels, there's they're going to do, like, you know, 
due diligence on themselves is going to be really quickly to decide, right? They're going to probably go ask their wife or something or their family members, one or two smart guys that they know that they think they can run this by, right? VCs, it takes a lot of time, right? Um, corporation, again, it varies, right? Uh, and the source of capital is obviously like for VCs, it's LPs. Uh, for corporations, it's, it's their own like balance sheet. Where did, is it coming out of innovation fund? We don't know. So like, you know, um, and capital amounts, right? So angels can ride from 5K to 100K. VCs like, you know, 25K up to millions of dollars and corporates from 500K to millions, okay? So plant that seed, right? So what do I mean by that? It's like start talking to founders early on, start making those relationships early on, right? If you or someone you know may be interested in investing, we would love to chat, right? So just go to everyone you meet and like, hey, this is what we're doing. If you know someone or, you know, uh, who would love to speak or blah, 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 we can talk to, you know, this is really important. This will get you more connections and start, start building those relationships early on. So when you are actually raising, you already have a good pipeline of people we can reach out to. Right. And make a specific ask. Right. So ask, like, do you know one person who might be interested in potentially investing? Right. So there, the, it could be like, oh, do you know a rich doctor or do you know a rich uncle? Right. Or do you know other angels that have already made their money or exited? Right. So this is this is important. And remember, early on, like you just have to use brute force. Right. So you you, you have to do like a lot of cold outreach to like you know, start, start getting from, start, uh, you know, start making those connections. Uh, you know, remember we are all, all outsiders and we all started this way, right? Nobody's born uh, with a lot of connection. Now, unless you're like Tim Draper, right? Then you have a lot of connections. Even then it's not. So, you know, feel no pressure at all because there's actually a lot of people. There are a lot of people out there who are rich, who are interested somewhere in the world. You just need to find them. Right. So there. So how there are some few lists that I say, like ask in person, email, warm intros are the best. Right. So if you have founders who can do a warm introduction for you, uh, that's the best to come off as. Right. Um, LinkedIn, cold emails, events, angel list is also another good one. Right. You can find on you can go on LinkedIn and find people who are angels or who have invested also on angel list. You can see who invested in who. Right uh get referrals pitch everyone right so pitch your family members pitch your friends uh pitch co-workers pitch founders uh find people at events and meetups right like ask them like have you hey have you have you meet anyone or someone right so this is how you start you do a soft pitch right so you can say you know uh, you know like you know when people come up and you have a normal conversation like oh uh, what have you been up to this what have you been up to these days, right? So that's the perfect time to pitch, right? So what have you been up to? How's your day going? What are you doing, right? So you can do like a soft pitch, right? And if, if it's positive, if people are like receiving, that's like when you ask like, you know, uh, for a referral, like, oh, hey, do you know one or two people that you know that you might be interested in this or might be interested in uh, meeting up with me? So this is really important. Uh, events and conferences. This is something I did really early on. Is like, you know, if there's an event happening where a lot of people are coming, find out who the speakers are, right? Uh, more than likely, people will be happy to meet up with you at that event, right? They will meet up with you at events. Another thing you could do is like go on, go on uh, Twitter and see if they're using a hashtag, right? So like, let's say there's like a conference going on and they have a hashtag. You'll see people bragging, oh, I'm going to this conference or I'm going to this. I'm going to be speaker at this palace. And you can reach out directly to them on Twitter. Uh, make a list of these people and email them. And, you know, another thing you could do is also become a speaker at the conference, right? So these conferences are pretty expensive, right? Uh, but you don't have to spend money. People can meet you outside or they can meet you around the hotel lobby or another bar at a hotel, right? So these are really things important. And event also allows you to become a thought leader. So you always have that option where you can say like, hey, you know, I want to pitch and I'm a thought leader in AI, right? So, so once you start meeting a lot of venture capitalists, you will start, start doing a lot of pattern matching, right? You will, 
you will start getting a lot of patterns. You'll figure out, well, most of my people are come, investors are coming from Asia, right? Uh, every rich person knows that, you know, they don't make money on salaries, right? And you make your money on investments, right? So most rich people know that, right? So so if you were in the seed round of Google or or Dropbox within just a few thousand dollars invested, you wouldn't have to be concerned about salary, right? So you will start seeing where most of your investors are coming from. You will know where, just like, you know, you, when you're a founder, you try to see where your customers are coming from, who are your potential buyers. It's the same thing with VCs, okay? Um, again, right? So pattern matching also works with story, right? Which, which story is working better? You can also run ads, right? So you can download all the emails of, uh, uh, VCs and run Facebook or retargeting ads on them. Uh, you can also do emails and also geolocation, right? So are they coming from the Middle East? Are they coming from Asia? Are they coming from the United States? Okay. Uh, this is again, the same thing I was talking about, like hacking your target, like uploading all the emails um, to uh, Facebook and you create audiences and you just target them. There's also LinkedIn ads. I have not tried this, right? Um, and just be aware of laws, right? So solicitation laws that's that are in your region. So that's another important thing. Um, and it's important to stand out, right? So make a video, sell your story, right? Put it on your website. Even if you're sending emails, you can like send a video pitch. It's important to stand out, right? Because all these investors and angels uh, get reached out to so much. Even I, like, you know, when I started early on investing in startups, um, I got a lot of outreach, right? At some point, it's just, you know, people just spamming and spamming. Uh, and this becomes bothersome and tiresome, right? So imagine like if you are somebody famous, how many, you know, pitches you're getting in a day. You need to stand out, right? So invest in a CRM system. Make sure that your leads don't fall through the cracks, right? So it's good to have a pipeline. So where you're seeing where your investors are coming in, uh, keeping track of conversions and just moving them down the pipeline. This is the most important thing. Um, and strike while the iron's hot, right? So don't let a hot hot lead go uh, cold. Close your deals fast as you can. Okay. Um, right. So you will be hot and dense. So what do I mean by this? Is like you know fundraising is like a slug, right? So in early on it will be really slow. But as you move along, you'll, you'll get more referrals, you get more leads, and you start qualifying them more. At the end of your fundraising process, that's when you'll start seeing results, right? So this is really important. And it takes a lot of hustle, right? And, and it takes a community. It, it's just not one person, right? It's just like all the people who helped you and who pushed you and who rooted for you. It takes a whole community to do a fundraising round. So this is really important. Um, Last but not the least, right? So good investment is more than just dollars, right? So a good investor will not just bring money, but will also open doors for you to introduce you to more investors, introduce you to more clients, uh, you know, introduce you to strategic partnership, right? So this is really important, right? So investor relationship is really important because one of investors investments and you don't want to burn people off, right? So make sure when you're talking to investors, you do keep that relationship alive. Um, and a CEO's job is to make friends and be friends with everyone, right? Um, ask how you can help, right? And remember to pay it forward, right? So what do I mean by that? So next time when a founder comes and asks you for help, make sure you do help him out, right? So because remember, some founder did help you out, so you need to pay it forward for somebody else, right? So I think this is it. Um, here's a quick thing, a quick uh, rundown on how you can find investors, right? So if you do 500 startups, alumni and founded companies, if you scroll down, uh, you can see the whole list of uh, people uh, that started 500 companies and you can reach out to the founders. If you go to AngelList, uh, let's say your favorite companies and you can see who invested in who and you can start creating a pipeline of people who you can reach out to. Right. So you have angel investors, you have uh, uh, VCs. And again, if you go on LinkedIn, you type in angel investors There's a huge list of people that pops up. Right. Uh, see who the common links are and see who can make an introduction for you. And that's it.
That's how you find investors and how you do fundraising. Uh, okay, so one of the questions by Zarina is like, hey, what kind of channels would you suggest to reach out to angel investors in the most effective way? Well, I, I talk, talked about that at the end. Uh, you know, the best way is to get an introduction, right? But early on, you just have to brute force. Like, even if it's a cold email, you will start building those relationships over time. Yeah. Okay, and how about this one? Can you please repeat the main idea around mentioned advice? Start small ticket from 25K and move on the way till 300K. You mean start our initial conversation from small ticket and then increase? Right. So what I mean by that, there's two things for this, right? It's like, so example, I, I'm using the using Elon Musk as an example, right? So let's say you have big name people that you have carry a lot of weight, right? So asking someone who to invest a million dollars is going to be hard. But asking someone is, and being really upfront is like, hey, you know, like I know a million dollar will be hard, but can you give me like five thousand uh, dollars to invest, and I can just use your name, and you use that name to get bigger people, right? So people who's like, oh, I can't believe Elon Musk invested, oh Jeff Bezos invested, great, all right, cool, help me in, right? Because they are your investors, right? But they did write small checks, so small ticket is like, you know. Angels, right, like from 5K to 25K, right? So you can start with small check sizes, right? From $5,000 to each angel investor, that's the minimum. And you can start moving up, right? So start moving up to bigger check sizes, right? Because you already collected that momentum and you don't want to have too many people on your, uh, what's it called? Your investment sheet. So I hope that answers uh, your question. All right, guys, take care. Have a good day. And again, you can reach out at any time. Take care. Bye.